This is John Cullen with GrowingYourGreens.com. I have another exciting episode for you. We got a special guest here, Josh of the Boogie Brew Company. What's up, John? What's up, dude? And then today, actually, why we're going to talk to you guys is about a very important subject that's near and dear to my heart, as well as Josh's, actually. And it's simply this, and I know many of you guys may have thought about this before. You know, John, why don't you use synthetic chemical fertilizers in your garden? And we're going to talk about synthetic chemical fertilizers versus organic fertilizers and yet even more so than just the boogie brew organic fertilizer other organic fertilizers actually that we got at a local store actually we're going to talk about those as well so you know uh, the first thing I want to say is I'll start by introducing Josh and you know Josh got into making the boogie brew compost tea because he was a grower he grew some uh, California tomatoes, John. California tomatoes back in the day. For years. Yeah. <laughs> For years. And he was using chemicals. And he's using chemicals, hydroponic chemicals, you know, that in fancy bottles cost lots of money. And, you know, they got some good results for him for a little while. But then he got some problems with root rot. And then he had to do something else to compensate for that. And then, and then things happened. And then basically what, what he transitioned to, like, growing organically slowly. Yeah. And then basically he ran into some hard times where he didn't have any money and he couldn't afford these expensive chemical fertilizers and he had to basically make his own compost tea. So this is his compost tea that he grew some really good NorCal some, stuff. Some, some of NorCal's <laughs> finest fruit ever was produced with Boogie Brew, John. Back in the day I started out with chemicals. I wanted those instant steroidal results. They worked for me. And then after six months, I had a disaster crop, and it sucked, bro. I got root rot, pythium. I was in a closed-loop hydroponic recirculating system, and what did I do? I went out and spent more money on another agent to try and control this condition that had been created from, I mean, from a false environment. So this is what happens, in my opinion, when you know we try to be Mother Nature. I mean, nature has worked for millions of years here on Earth, and it's created its own systems and things that you know work if we get out of the picture but us as humans we want to always try to control nature and you know control yeah. the weather and all this kind of stuff and, it just, and we can't do it it just doesn't work and we can think we're smarter than them smarter than nature but you know nature always gets us back nature will adapt and change and you know stuff will happen so that's why I like to grow the natural method as found in nature you know grow organically using naturally uh, derived components to grow in. Um, so Josh, tell us what the real bad thing is inside this uh, synthetic chemical can I pour, fertilizer. Can here. I pour some of it out? Yeah, can pour, I show pour it out to show people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I put some on my hand earlier and I couldn't believe it. It actually burned my hand. It was disgusting. Yeah, I mean, it you know? can also burn your plants like it's burning Josh's Oh yeah, hand. no, just a wee bit of it. Just a and, little and dust. And we did actually uh, put a Tape over the uh, yeah over the manufacturing the manufacturing yeah. tape so we can keep the guilty innocence. Yeah, and then we pour some out here and look at this. It's just like pop rocks. Wow, okay. that's crazy man. <laughs> it looks like some candy. Yeah, mommy, daddy, candy, baby, <laughs> eat. <laughs> Bam! That's Your baby <laughs> might not be living no more. So keep this out of the reach of children, please. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny because. What this product is made out of is oil and gas. Over 90% of America's fertilizers sold in hardware stores and garden centers everywhere today are made from oil and gas. So like pretty much like this yeah. bottle of oil here. Now you, some of you have seen my video on uh, you know on Boogie Brew where I where I just show how ridiculous it is. You wouldn't knowingly pour. Wait, wait, that's my <laughs> plan, dude. No, no, no. What are you doing? Oh my gosh, he here, poured oil. Pour it. It's not oil, John. Relax. It's oh, me. look, it's black stuff on my plant, dude. Oh, my God, look at that. There you go. There you go, John. What are you doing? <laughs> but you guys are doing that each and every day when you're using chemical fertilizers on your plants, and you could burn your plants, hurt your plants, and more importantly, you know, in my opinion, you're going to mess up the environment, man. We only get one chance in the environment. We, You know, chemical fertilizers and residues are going Ew. down in Mississippi and, you know, creating dead zones in the Gulf and whatnot, and you can't grow in those areas anymore. And if you use too much chemical fertilizer in your own garden, you're going to mess up your soil, mess up your land that you own if you own your property. Joan, by the way, uh, it's molasses. Oh, molasses. That's good for your plants, right? That'll actually feed the beneficial microbes in there, right? Uh, yeah, you know what? It will. Um, don't overdo it with sugars. You know, when you make a compost tea for your plants, uh, feed them the main course, and certainly you can boost 
dwindling microbial populations in your soil once in a while with some additional sugars. I kind of overdid it here with the molasses, trying to make it. I mean, doesn't that look like what it is? Just so disgusting, you know, pure motor oil. And that's what we're all doing. And what I did for years as a hydroponic grower, before I learned to hybridize, it was a slow, long transition. I, I stubbornly held on. I kept thinking, ooh, I can keep injecting those steroids, you know, into my soil and getting the plant to uptake everything faster. And it was just too easy. I could just mix a teaspoon of this, teaspoon of that, adjust the pH, and there you go, bro, you know, getting my monster yields. However, I would get burned crops. I mean, what farmer using conventional fertilizers hasn't had burned crops? I mean, come on, you all have, I'm sure. And it's just disgusting. Why would you put something made from, from oil and gas? Not to mention the karma with nature. This is 500 million years of sunlight making oil for us that we're squandering in 80 years and scorching the whole earth with, John. And what, are, what, are, what would our great-grandparents have thought? And what would our great-grandchildren think? When I was in school in England, they taught us the Green Revolution, how it made the overpopulation of the planet possible. What was the Green Revolution in the 50s? It was using chemicals, it was chemical farming 40, 50 years ago. They were saying, oh, this is, this is a miracle that we have all these substances that we can just create, you know. And, and it's all we can fool it. chemical fertilizers, a totally new invention that just happened not even that long ago. So it's relatively new and it's companies marketing and selling you guys products that you guys have to buy. Like my style of garden is natural organic gardening based on nature's principles. You know, and in nature, there's no pixies, you know, flying around, fluttering around, you know, like Tinkerbell with 10, 10, 10, 15, 15, 15, spreading it on these entire huge rainforests that are growing for <laughs> millions of years with, without chemical fertilizer. And you guys could do that if you get your soil back to how it is in the forest. And that's why I like some of the natural products and organic products that allow you to do that. So, Josh, tell us about some of the consequences of using chemical fertilizers to the environment because I know you're actually really into the environment probably even maybe a little bit more so than I am. Oh, I doubt that, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're just going to scorch the earth every time you feed this stuff. Um, and going back to the analogy of, you know, 10-10-10 uh, or 20-20-20, whatever those numbers, what do those numbers mean? Well, they call them salts. I mean, I find that horrible that they, they call fertilizers, chemical fertilizer salts. Which Monsanto salts did you run on your raspberries last year, partner? I ran 20 ammonia phosphate E uh, monopotassium H, you know, for cost me $20 a kilo or $20 a ton, excuse me. Anyway, um, no, the minute you start introducing this stuff, the microbial web of life, think of it like a speaker grill or what do we got here? Let me. So, okay, so you've got your whole web here, right? And you've got nematodes over here, you've got ciliates and protozoa, and they're all communicating with each other. And there's, and, you know, in a, in a redwood forest, for example, we always use that example, but in a redwood forest, it's the most striking because redwood trees growing five, ten miles away from, from each other, 300 foot tall monsters that have been there for centuries laying down this in building the most amazing tapestry of life in the soil beneath them, they communicate with each other. And so when one tree is drying out a little bit or facing maybe even, uh, maybe it's had a fire and it's coming back, the, all these amazing messengers, which we still know nothing, as, we know nothing about this stuff. As big as Boogie Brew is, as the compost tea movement is, as the new fascination with soil biology, as, as this thought consciousness, like, my God, what has 80 years of carbon farming done to us? Now we have to remedy the topsoil that we've scorched by investing in microbiology. And now, again, there's the temptation to, you know, mess with nature and try and out, you know, well, thank goodness with compost tea, you're, you're really maximizing those systems because as those systems get destroyed by the, let's say the chemical comes in over here on this redwood tree, and all these mycorrhizae, billion, billions and billions and billions of, of, of organisms, and also, of course, the mycorrhizae traveling across the little fungal threads throughout a whole forest communicating with each other. So when one little colony of them over here gets destroyed by these evil chemicals, just like when some cells in your body get wiped out by you know, radiation or just a, a horribly toxic soup of 
of chemicals from food, and the, the cells can finally no longer repair themselves, and they turn cancerous. That's exactly what happens in your soil. This whole amazing microbial matrix, this web of life that we still have no understanding of, that our Creator gave us, and that you know, Mother Nature has nurtured for billions of years, that we think that we can fool that and put these so-called water-soluble salts. <laughs> salts, salts the salt of the earth, what are you talking about? Anyways, into this matrix and not damage it and think that we can do it all for cheap because we've got big oil supplying it, you know, through those pipelines from the Gulf, you know, uh, from Iraq, you know, everywhere and it's all giving us this amazingly comfortable lifestyle with no thought of the consequences, John. So again, you damage that with those chemicals, you're scorching them. Now, let's talk about these, the, the water soluble thing, okay? Look, in nature, it, there isn't, it isn't water soluble. It's a, a living soup, so to speak, a probiotic bath of organism activity. And a, and a lot of stuff that they're releasing through their guts, that they're breaking down, those microbes, in, in enzyme form. It's like yogurt, you know, it sits there and bathes the entire root zone and repairs critical areas as they dehydrate and keeps everything cohesive, that glue of life going. And it isn't water soluble. And it sits there and breaks down like earthworm castings, worm gold plus. One, one, one. Geez, that ain't nothing. I mean, geez, partner. 15, 15, 15, <laughs> man, it's better. You know, and, and what happens to that water-soluble salt, you know, the chemical 15, 15, 15? It, it's soluble. It just goes down into the whole groundwater. Are you kidding me? And so out of that 15, 15, 15, your plants are lucky not to get burned by what they do use. And 90% of it just goes on down into the water table, into, the, into our groundwater, which we drink from, our children are going to drink from. Um, when are you having kids? Huh? Uh, when okay. I find a girlfriend, and then I guess the girlfriend what? will turn into the fiance, okay. and then the fiance will turn into the wife, and then we'll have kids. John? I mean, it's going a long ways off, man. Oh my God. <laughs> don't, don't get me started here, man. I would love to come back as your kid, okay? <laughs> I mean, that, that's, your kid, when you have one, is going to be the Kohler baby supreme. Let's not go there right now, but... Um, yeah, I mean, what happens to that stuff? It just breaks down into that groundwater that our kids or your kids to be, um, you know, will drink from. And that's disgusting when you think about that. You just pour it on there. It's this chemical sauce. It, you know, it burns the soil, wipes out that wonderful living or, you know, matrix, and, and then goes yonder because it's so soluble and leaves. And now your plants are weakened, and now they need more of it. They become like mini they're becoming like heroin like Yes, like, like heroin junkies. We've turned, oh my God, I mean, we've turned, we've turned the heartland of, of America, you know, the, the whole Corn Belt. We've turned that into, you know, completely impotent, heroin junkied out uh, plants and soil. It's just, a, it's just a chemical mess that's supporting it. Now, what water system drains out of that whole breadbasket of America, out of that whole Corn Belt? And where does that water system go? We've all heard about the Gulf of Mexico and how completely there's these massive dead zones from those water-soluble nitrate-based fertilizers. The, the Green Revolution has now led to a, a black ocean, you know, an ocean that's just completely devoid of life. And, from the Mississippi River Delta, flowing out of all these millions of miles of waterways, you know, the, like I said, the heartland of America. Now think about that. Think about that next time you go to your hardware store and you're tempted to do what I did for years, which is buy some sexy labeled, you know, amazing results, blah, 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 fertilizer product. It's, it's just crazy. It's insane. What are our great-grandchildren going to think? And yeah. what would our great-grandparents be thinking if they could? If they could turn in their graves right now, believe me, they'd be twisting and hollering. I mean, I totally agree with Josh. You know, like, we got to think of the consequences of using different products. I mean, yes, it can grow large crops. The thing is, you know, what is it going to do to the soil? What is it going to leave for future generations? And is it natural? And, you know, the other thing that really gets me is that I'm really into growing, like, high-quality chit, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. I mean, fruits and vegetables. And... You know, this, conventional farmers are doing this. They're, this is what they're doing. So you might as well go and buy the produce at your local produce store because you're going to get produce grown on 
some fertilizer like this. I don't want things grown on this fertilizer because things grown in a full, uh, you know, symbiotic, microbiotic, um, fungal, you know, active soil with trace minerals is much higher quality, has a lot higher levels of nutrition, plus a lot higher flavor and bricks. better flavor bricks. too. Higher bricks, higher levels. bricks too mm -hmm. as well. Yep. So Josh, we know this is not the answer just because of all the problems it can cause. I mean, we're not going to say it doesn't work because it actually does work if you do it right, follow the directions and all this stuff. But it's really a poor choice and there's definitely a better way. So let's go ahead and move this guy out. Move some of this guy out here that got fed with oil. <laughs> and uh, then we're oh going to say God, the space dust. We're, we'll leave the space dust. I'm not <laughs> touching that, man. And now we got some uh, better organic options, actually, that are available at your local big box store. Actually, that's where they, we pick these guys up. And uh, once again, we've uh, covered the names to keep the innocent guilty. No, wait. I said that wrong. <laughs> anyways, don't worry about it. <laughs> so, anyways, we got a, blo a blood meal here, a bone meal, and we got an organic, uh, actually, all purpose. Uh, fertilizer actually and these definitely in my opinion are better options than the chemical fertilizer although they may not be the best so specifically first we're going to talk about the bone and the blood meal so Josh you want to tell us why bone and blood meal may not be uh, the best option well you know again you're absolutely correct John this is infinitely better than your chemical space dust this is not just going to scorch the earth that you're growing your plants in. So if you do want to take care, better care of your soil than your neighbors using their, you know, 1010 whatever, this is, let, you know, I like, whenever I buy myself some pre-made food, I like to read the label. So let's read the label here and it says, this product contains 12% slowly available water insoluble nitrogen. So that's good. Remember what I was talking about? Water good. insoluble because it's slowly, slowly being released, released. and, and the, the, uh, the bacteria are gonna digest it through their guts and make it available to your plants. However, uh, okay, so from, how do you say this? Porcine, porcine, porcine blood meal. Porcine, dude, okay, John, the pig slaughterhouses, the pig, the factory pig farms in America where 90 plus percent of America's pork, porcine, that's pork, where 90% of our pork sold in America today comes from these just the most disgusting imaginable uh, factory farms that have laid waste, just go Google it, YouTube it, they've, they've laid waste to entire county-wide areas in, uh, what is it, I think it's North Carolina or South Carolina, it's one of the Carolina states where there's a particularly strong concentration of these porcine facilities, so consider the source people, where is this stuff coming from, what about mad cow disease? What about the organisms that are like, they turn your brain to Swiss cheese, like right? Spongiform or something. Yeah, exactly, a spongiform, some nanobacteria. I mean, think about the food chain that produced this stuff. Man, it's, it's better than those chemicals. It is a step up. It sure is cute and sexy, and it's pretty packaging. Um, but like I said, same with the bone meal, I believe, right? Doesn't it say from, yep, same yeah, thing, 6% uh, slowly available nitrogen. So they're, they're, you know, pitching that slowly available, not going to burn your plants and go straight into the water table um, from porcine bone meal. So, ooh, yeah, It says non-cow source on there. Non ooh, from a high quality non-cow non source. Pig, and they put porcine, they didn't even put pig. <laughs> wow, yeah, so I mean, yeah. I totally agree. This is definitely a better option. But still, it's not my first or even last choice. I do a whole bunch of other stuff before I even would use any of these things in my personal garden. You know, I also want to respect other creatures on the earth, you know, for my personal views. And, you know, using bone and blood meal, it's just, you know, basically waste from one industry you're putting down into your garden. And, you know, while I would use some animal manures, high quality animal manures, you know, from a lot of factory farms, they're feeding the, the animals the cheapest stuff possible, yeah. mm -hmm. and their bone and blood and the meat that they're producing is also really low quality. If not toxic, John. Yeah, if if yeah. not outright toxic. Yeah. And dangerous and dangerous and too. The other thing that I really want you guys to think about is, you know, how does nature work? You know, one of the things I like to do, being on a, you know, into my quest for you know, living healthfully is I look at nature for answers. I mean, nature's been around for millions, if not billions of years, and it, it has systems that have worked all these things out. And I just want to best model nature in my own garden and in my personal life. And in nature, you know, most of the 
compost is generated on the forest floor, like that big forest that we talked about, you know, tropical rainforest. There's not the pixies spread in the 15, 15, 15. There's the trees dropping its leaves. There's, you know, uh, bark peeling off the, the, you know, the, the trees. There's trees falling and decomposing. And yes, there's the animals that are scurrying around and leaving their droppings in the occasional one bites the dust and the bone and blood rots in the forest floor but there's not like piles of animals rotting in the forest there's a small percentage it's mostly green waste and vegetative materials that have been feeding nutrients to the plants and yes plants will absorb all kind of nutrients whether they're bone or blood meals or even you know synthetic chemicals so I think there's just definitely better options than the, the bone and blood. So let's move these out the table right now. And let's next talk about this one, Josh. This is a, you know, a 533 all-purpose plant food here. Oh, cool. You know, like it's, so it's organic. So, you know, in my opinion, this is probably a better alternative than those other two. But, you know, actually, once again, we want to encourage you guys to read the ingredient label on anything you buy. And Josh, uh, yeah, let me read this. Here? It's made from hydrolyzed feather meal, uh, pasteurized poultry manure, which is, you know, most of the chicken manure products that are out there. Again, they're coming from these factory farms, but I take my chances on chicken manure over porcine. You uh, know, I definitely that. agree with uh, that. Cocoa meal, that's good. This is good. Okay, there's your bone meal. Uh, what your, you there's your alfalfa meal, your green sand, your humates, uh, your sulfate of potash, and your sulfate of potash magnesia um, contains 3% slow release nitrogen. There it is again from hydrolyzed feather meal, pasteurized poultry manure, cocoa meal, bone meal, and alfalfa meal. Now, what's cool about this product is they're also inoculating it with additional uh, strains of colony forming bacterial units. So they're, they're attempting to harness the same bacteria of which there's you know, 50,000 more percentage points diversity of species on the forest floor and give you those to aid in the carbon degradation. They, they're trying to give you some high octane carbon recyclers for the, uh, the dense carbon fuel that's in this package. So, you know, this is definitely a step in the right direction. However, in, in a, you know, going back to the forest floor analogy, my favorite place on planet Earth, you've got to get there someday if you have never been, is Humboldt Redwood State Park. So I want you to scatter my ashes, John. Um, and, and they've tested it, you know, 17,000 acre continuous forest of virgin, red, of virgin redwoods. I call them. All of them over 300 feet tall and they start talking to you after you've been there on a bike or hiking on the trails for a few minutes. Just an amazing place and they've tested this place as having 18 times higher levels of life forms. Eight, the, it's the world's richest bio biosphere, the, the world's richest biological zone with uh, 18 times higher quantity of life forms than the next richest source in the world, which is the Amazon rainforest. So the analogy, as you said, of a whole redwood forest and all these things breaking down, we're only just beginning to understand the miracles of soil biology. We've barely begun to scratch the surface, even in our most esteemed horticultural colleges and universities. And now we're desperate to catch up on 80 years of carbon farming and, and use microbes to reclaim the topsoil that we've destroyed. It's a lot more simple than that. You can go out and start community composts. You can go gather your own wood chips. You can send Joe Neighbor who's, you know, chipping his, his redwood fence maybe, you know. You can, um, if you're going to use animal manures, go find some from your neighbor who's got free-range chickens. Uh, rabbit, you know, castings are, are awesome. Um, we all know that worms make the best hummus in the world. So, yes, this is great, but John, the way you've been preaching it all these years and refining your techniques, and by the way, good job in your garden. He's been <laughs> busting balls out there in his own food farm. You're not using this stuff. I don't see you using this stuff. I see you building your own uh, microbial sandwich layer, you know, your own beautiful cake of, of, tell them, tell your viewers what you've been putting in. in, I mean, in right now, rebuilding your summer I mean, boxes. You guys saw the last episode, actually, if you didn't see it, check it out, it's up now, and you'll see where, how I re-enrich my beds after every season, and I use a whole different spectrum and build a layer cake of different stuff that you guys saw, I won't go over it all in this video, but you know, I, I use natural ingredients that are going to build the micro population because you know just like this company has 
some ingredients in there, and most of them I agree with, maybe except for like the, the bone meal I think I didn't like so much, but everything else is actually, I would actually use that in my older generation days. Yeah. Not now, more, it, I like to say advanced or maybe just different now than that I kind of think even further beyond to increase the, much more increase the microbial population because of the microbes, the fungi, the protozoa, all these different creatures in the, in the soil basically break down the nutrition in the soil. And even if you think your soil has no nutrients, it's got nutrients in there. You just need the right bacteria, fungi, and to, 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 it. Yep, to yep. break it down, to yep. make it water soluble. I mean, that's what the new, that's what the, the little bi biology in there do. And if you want to learn more about this excellent book that breaks it down so that you guys can understand it, it's called Teeming with Microbes. Teeming with Microbes. If you guys read that book, you'll be like, oh my God. This is how it is, and then you'll be on the program if you're if you're not on it yet. You you need to interview that dude, Jeff. Uh, no, I, I saw him at I yeah. saw him at the Chicago uh, Flower and Garden Show two years ago, and actually I went to his talk. It was amazing, and I said, "Hey man, can I interview you?" And we just never hooked up. So I mean, you need to I do will that. I one of these days, absolutely. That book is awesome. When I finally made the switch to 100% vegan tea based gardening after 14 years of being a NorCal uh, fruit grower, shall we say? Um, that was the book that really lit the torch for me. I'd read the other ones, but that one is, does such a good job, just like you do, John, of making the information accessible to its readers, and like you do to your viewers. So another thing I'm going to give you a tip. Can we open this? Is this thing actually open? All right. So your nose will tell you more. Your nose will tell you more. Hey, you know, that smells, that smells good. But no, remember it yesterday, smells too it smells like yeah, poop. too too poopy, too chicken manure. It does, it does, it does. You're right, bro. I don't know. I mean, I don't, my stuff, the no. stuff I smell, I, the stuff I put in my garden does not, does not, it doesn't smell like that. No, no. I, I mean, of mean, course, using some manure is better than chemicals, but you know, in my opinion, there's even better than. Oh, I don't want to smell that. <laughs> that stuff, stuff burned my hand already. There's stuff better than this, Josh. Let's go ahead and just get out the best stuff of all, in my opinion, better than this stuff here. And what we got there is that we got this stuff right here. I mean, you, you know, your nose will tell you more than a $10,000 microscope any day. I mean, yesterday you were do, laying in your sandwich cake of biology, and I couldn't believe how good that hummus that you were using yesterday smelled. I mean, that was a really wicked awesome batch of compost. And... I could, like I always tell people, I could make love to good soil biology, and man, that was soil. I'll have to get that on video. That was good. That actually might go viral. <laughs> <laughs> man makes love to soil. I could make love to good soil. I just, you know, wonderful water, you know, chemical-free water, wonderful soil, a healthy microbial matrix. And yeah, let's, let's take a whiff here. I mean, so now, oh, Josh, gosh. you know, you're the inventor of the boogie brew, so you might be a little bit, you know, uh, I don't know what, tainted or like. Oh, you know, yeah. Definitely. You think this is the best shit in the world? And I mean, it's good stuff. I definitely agree. It's a one-stop shop for your growing package. Let me smell that. That's a good one. Well, actually, you know, it smells actually good. You know, I actually, I don't <laughs> mind the smell of it like I do mind the smell of that other stuff. So, you know, this is only on here. This is only listed as a, what is it? What's the, what's the rating on this? Oh, you know what? I pulled the numbers, but I, they're on my old tags. Well, the last time we tested it, it was one, four, three. Now, uh, it's probably going up a bit because I love brewer's yeast and I'm putting more brewer's yeast in the tea and that's a great source of organic and available But wait a second, Phosphorus. Josh. If this is like Phosphorus. one, four, three, last time you did it, those other ones are like much higher. I mean, 10, 10, 10, 15, 15, 15, 5, 3, 5 or whatever that one was. Like, dude, this is so low. Is it going to even work for my plants? I guarantee you, your soil microbes are going to thrive on this a whole lot more than any of that other stuff. I mean, don't get me we going. Don't, we don't really need high numbers, right? I mean, that's no. kind of like, we always think like, bigger's better, man. I want the bigger car. I want the most expensive car. I want the most expensive this. Bigger number is better, you know. Less is more. Less is more. Less is so now, much Now, why more. is less more in, in your package here? What makes less more? Because we're not what we eat, we're what we absorb. And it's the same with your plants and the soil that you're feeding them. And when you're feeding the soil life forms, guess what? You, there's no uh, parts per million pen or an electrical conductivity meter that can measure truly the enzymatic digest, the actual content that's being digested, gone through the guts of the microbes and through the whole web of life, which I can't even begin to describe it. I mean, I'm not a soil scientist. I do have a good knack for recipes. I've nailed a, a real clean, green, really healthy soil tonic, very vegan and, and awesome stuff here, very stable in the so pack. Let's, let's read know. the ingredients on this, Josh. I mean, in here that we got... We got a lot of ingredients. Premium, biodynamic, 
humus, worm castings, rock phosphate, langbanite, soy, kelp, and alfalfa meal, cold water, north Atlantic kelp extract, nutritional yeast, ocean trace minerals, and volcanic rock powder, 70% humic acid from Leonardite shale, organic evaporated cane sugar juice. Wow, man, this is actually something that I almost eat. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, that, that's one of the things I'm so proud of with Boogie Brew. And it's non-toxic, so yeah. if your kid like wants to eat this, and I still don't recommend that, it's not gonna be as bad as eating the blue stuff. Well, it's you know, it was what it, you know, Leah made it clear to me when we decided to, to launch a compost tea business together that it, you know, you, you have to be able to drink it, Josh. You know, it's got to be clean. You know, it can't it can't harm humans. I mean, if Grandma's making this for her aloe vera plant that she moisturizes her skin with, and her five year old accidentally starts drinking it after he says, "What's that, Granny? Oh, it's compost tea, honey." He's not gonna go to the hospital drinking a tea made from this stuff. Even the worm gold worm castings that we put in here are vegan worm castings. That means the worms are not fed any manures. 90% of the commercially produced worm castings sold in America today are fed animal manures. Why? Because those manures are free, they're cheap, they're abundantly available to these worm farmers, and yes, they make good worm food. I make a very deluxe, high-grade compost tea at a sensible, low bulk granola price, and, and I want it to be as clean, green, and vegan as possible. Also, the, the enzyme content, let's talk about the enzymes. Two that you, I've heard you talk about it, you've heard me talk about it, chitinase. The, uh, the bugs are the, you know, insects that attack your plants are, all insects are made from this crustacean material that we call chitin, the back, the exoskeletal matter of those insects. So when you have a worm that eats a lot of chitin, it produces a lot of chitinase, the enzyme that digests the chitin. So when you have a worm casting that's 10 times higher, 200 million colony forming units per gram of chitinase, you have a, a much more powerful, uh, you know, plant strengthening agent. Chitinase acts as a, as a repellent that the plants put out. Same with the cellulase. The cellulase is the enzyme that breaks down the cellulose, which is what the fungal backs of mold spores are made out of. So your powdery mildew, big problem here for those NorCal growers, um, thanks to the monoculture, thanks to the disruption of nature, thanks to taking chemicals, the carbon farming era has now spawned a whole generation of plant pathogens and diseases, mold spores, um, and very, very powerful bugs, you know, who are resistant to the worst, you know, let's, we can't even begin to talk about pesticides. So, you know, this tea, less is more. You only need one dry cup of ingredients you put into the burlap bag. We've all heard me, you know, you can see the videos, how I do it, but less really is more. You just take one of those chameleon hose end sprayers, which ironically are invented for the purpose of applying the chemicals and, and, and do a, a one, an eight ounce per gallon uh, dilution, that's about a one to 15 dilution, and just go around and drench everything once or twice a week. And you can and do it on the leaves and yeah, at yeah. the roots and everything, but everything. I don't recommend doing that in full sun. You want to do it later in the evening, otherwise you'll get some burn. Yeah, there's some... Evaporation. There's, I, I tried to do a video at the Bounty Farm. My computer crashed. I got to retrieve the damn thing, but uh, I did a great video. Uh, I was stunned as I did the video how many hundreds of square feet, how many thousands of plants, all their starts that I was strengthening, and so easily with diluted Boogie Brew compost tea, running through the chameleon hose end sprayer. It just did a fabulous job and the plants loved it. One of the reasons why I liked your product here is because it also adds a microbial, you know, benefit to your soil because if your soil doesn't have it, you know, your soil, you're in your plants, your plants will not be able to actually absorb the nutrients that are already in the soil. Plus you're adding nutrients as well, including some of my favorite things in the world, the worm castings, in addition to, I mean, you got the kelp in there. I mean, this the water is like, soluble kelp. You got the ocean trace minerals and volcanic rock powder, which I'm really a fan of because the minerals are really required in the soil for the microbes, but also for the plants. I mean, the other thing I really want you guys to be aware of is that whatever you put in the soil is going to become your plants and you're going to be eating your plants and it's going to become you. So I want to put in a wide variety, I want to put in a smorgasbord of food for the plants. Or for the bacteria, for the microbes, everything, yeah. for the microbes in the soil, so that it could feast, so the plants could basically absorb whatever they want, and not just give them 10, 10, 10, which is basically three nutrients. When this one has 90 plus minerals, easily plus a whole bunch of other things 
in there so that your plants can truly dance. It's a pretty dialed in recipe, John, and, and remember, by the time your plants utilize the foods that are in here, they've already been digested by the microbes, and we all know Boogie Brew, it just explodes to life. It's really, really fast. Thank you so much for endorsing my product. It means a lot to me. I want to get America off of chemical salts. And I want you to brew baby brew to recover your topsoil. And no, you don't have to use my Boogie Brew. Yes, it's a great product. I love how John endorses it. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate you guys all really liking my recipe. But it's more important to me that you just get off of this total mistake, you know, 80-year carbon farming experiment. I was a victim of it myself when I was a hydroponic grower. Um, you know, I learned after 14 years. I'm proud of John Kohler for teaching you all the path, you know. We've got to rebuild our topsoil. First of all, let me go back to saying what you've already heard me say with an interview you gave me for a couple of minutes. was 10 kilocalories of fossil fuel energy are required to produce one kilocalorie of food energy in America today. That's because of the distribution network of all the materials. That's certainly because of the petrochemical-based fertilizers that are used. <coughs> Actually, fertilizers are made from gas in general, and pesticides are made from oil. That's an interesting tidbit. It doesn't matter. It's all fossil fuel. So, um, keep on growing, you know, keep on doing what everything he teaches. It's so simple. D uh, don't try to control nature. Harness the forces that nature already has bestowed upon you. Um, and, and, you know, that is, it's this web of life. We, like I said, we don't even understand it yet. So, Josh, I want to get the Boogie Brew compost tea out to my viewers there. And I know, you know, this is not, unfortunately, available at every nursery in the country, even any big box stores that I even know. I don't know if anybody picked you up yet, but you know, we want to make that available because you know what you guys have available are locally. You have the, the chemicals, which I recommend you do not use. You also have other organic options that in my opinion are far better, but you know, I always want to teach you guys good, better, best. I want you guys to do the best you possibly can. If the best you can do is this, that's great. I'm all for it. But if you could do better, and you can get the Boogie Brew compost tea, I think that's even better. And I really want to get this stuff out to you guys, and I know it can be hard to find, so I really hammered on Josh hard. Yeah, he did. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get like, the, he, like he always does. Get yeah. you guys, get uh -huh. my viewers the best deal to make it as most affordable as possible. I mean, literally what Josh is doing, he's giving you better than wholesale prices that he would sell these to a store direct to you guys directly without having to go through the store, without having to buy large volume. So the, this kit's gonna be the monster kit that you know he hasn't ever offered yet with actually his brand new product that I talked about in my last episode. For those of you guys that have been asking me where to get it, you're gonna get it in this episode. First time, first debut ever. You're gonna get the two pounds of the Boogie Brew compost tea. You're also gonna get that Boogie Humus that you saw me spread in my berry garden. This is good. this is some good stuff, okay? And actually, there's two of them. They're yeah, gonna yeah. get two bags. So this is how many pounds of this total, Josh? Uh, well, you know, this stuff is made from highly composted wood chips. So the wood chips aren't that heavy. I think these bags are weighing about eight pounds a piece. Seven, whatever I can fit. What I'm gonna do for your viewers is whatever I can fit into a large flat rate. Uh, board game box. But, I mean, there you go. You know. Wow, man, that's some nice yeah. dark black stuff. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Look at, look at my cut. Look at my hands now. It huh? doesn't stain yeah. your hands, man. Let me smell that it stuff. It does stain your hands. It stains your hands with wonderful black <laughs> humic. Okay, <laughs> not with a chemical burn. Ah, you contaminated it. Oh no, we got the space dust. Good lord. Well, uh, all right. Anyway, so, so yeah, tell so, my viewers about ooh, this product, ooh, and you know, ooh, ooh. hold on, smell that. See, I can smell that now all day. I mean, I can put, put a pile of this next to my bed. I can't, put make that other, I can't put that other chicken shit next to my bed, but I can smell this all day. <laughs> I mean, stuff your garden, it should smell good to you. Yep. This smells good to me. So, Josh, what's in this product that makes it so good and so good for my viewer's gardens? Now, the hummus of good wood chip compost matter is going to create ideal conditions for beneficial fungi. Fun guy, John likes his fun girls. I love beneficial fun guy, okay? It's just, you've got to build the right conditions, those, those threads, those pathways, and there's something about wood chips, highly composted, mm, delicious, you know? So, such good biology. The, the fun guy love, I'm generalizing. Yes, it's wonderful for bacteria too. 
But the worms actually create the best hummus on earth, even better, and that's your microbial goodness comes from the worms, again I'm generalizing, and your, your fungal pathways get built by your wood chip compost. So your worms are busy in the forest floor, they're working their way through, they're pooping, pooping everywhere they go, and what they're spewing out is the most amazing composted hummus on earth. And here we struggle for months, you know, to create our own compost. We buy these fancy compost there, and the worms are doing it for you all the time. And then those wood chips are breaking down and just creating these perfect pathways for all those mycorrhizal fungi organisms to start spreading themselves like a spider's web throughout the entire soil soup, throughout the whole microbial web of life matrix, okay? So the boogie hummus, we found it right here. We have it made for us on site. We filter it. We, uh, we remove the bigger size wood chips. We get it down to a, a finely screened. It's a minimum of nine month aged wood chip compost and we enrich it with biochar. You love Sonoma Compost Company and I got to give them a plug because unfortunately because they're by a waste stream facility we can't use the compost from a waste stream facility has too much chance of plastic contaminating it. This is such a clean source material, source point material. The man who watches his landscapers coming in every day, running their routes, he's watching like a hawk. The quiet, immaculate church and the mellow low profile apostle dude who's getting my wood chip compost together for me, monitoring the source materials that are making it to begin with, okay? Keeping the green waste quota down below 15% and keeping the wood chip based matter up around 80 plus percent, right? So I'm very proud of Boogie Hummus. Once I found it, it was the mother load and I just, now we're making it. Uh, we're, it's registered in California, it's pen, pending registration, so we're releasing it. It's Boogie Hummus people. I want you to, I challenge, you know, take the BH, the Boogie Hummus and put it up against any other hummus product. Give me your feedback. I want to learn. So I'm going to give you two bags two of these eight quart, nine quart bags. And then I'm also going to give you, remember I was talking about the worms, come on then show them. Yes indeed, you guys are going to get eight pounds of the worm castings. The worm, go. let's smell this, those. This is the stuff actually I use in my garden that you guys saw me spread out. And you use this. And that stuff, yeah. just the other episode. Yeah. Wow, it smells nice too. Yeah. I mean, man, all oh, these things, no, like, man. they don't have any negative odor. They're either positive or a neutral now, look at odor that. that's not offensive. There you go. See, you go right there. Now, what are those little little bits in there, John? That's the volcanic rock, okay? The ground up. It's kind of, it's a little chunkier than azomite. It's not quite a flower. This is my buddy George Hahn, who's been my mentor, who's taught me everything I know about my tea, besides the stuff I taught myself. California vermiculture. That's another dude you need to interview. Amazing horticulture. I mean, Josh has gone around and like interviewed and sourced some of the oh, yeah. best products that I've ever seen. I'm obsessed with having the world's ultimate compost tea recipe. When I find an ingredient that works better than worm gold that I can buy by the pallet at a reasonable price, I'm, I probably have to go with it. This is what happened with me when I had to go hummus hunting, okay? So we're absolutely always going to provide you with the best bulk granola recipe. So the other product you get also guys is this right here. You get four pounds of the C90 product. This is the trace minerals. Man, I'm super up on the trace minerals whether you're using some rock dust in the soil like I am or feeding the C90 after you plant your plants, existing lawns, existing trees, even fruit trees. I mean, put this on your house plants even. Give them the minerals too. The plants will appreciate you, but more importantly, the microbes in the soil will appreciate you as well because you're feeding them as well and you're just going to have healthier soil and healthier plants because of it. And this is also registered for livestock and you know the company also makes a food grade version and it's actually an identical product. This is the world's greatest sea salt. It's absolutely delicious. You can taste the minerals that are in it. It's the best salt I've ever tasted in my life. They make another one called Seasons 90. You pay, you pay a food industry price for it because one of the nice things about the horticultural industry is because things are so crude, because it's just registered for soil feeding, you know, things tend to be cheaper because they don't have to use the same. But this is just salt. This is being dehydrated in by sunlight, just by the sun. So the sun harvested this right down here in Baja, um, California, below the border in Mexico where the Colorado River Delta empties into the uh, Sea of Cortez and twice a year the ocean moves 30 miles from a lunar tide, sweeps all these rocky mountain river deposits 
and, uh, and, and, and then dries out with this crystalline layer. Let's not forget, John, this is catalytic energy. There's 90 different elements in here. The microbes are not directly eating these salt crystals, but all the little electrical currents that are being generated by those 90 elements in here create the most wonderful catalyzing electrical field that microbes just thrive in. So adding this to my compost tea, it's about 4% of Boogie's recipe, is a fabulously important component. Let's not forget, the Egyptians used to pray to a god, they called him Happy or She, H-A-P-Y, one P, and it was the flood god, and they wanted the Nile River Delta to flood, to have this massive tidal Mediterranean surge that would create a saltwater marsh flood uh, throughout the whole Nile River Delta area, of course, post-season. Why did they pray to that god to have that flood? Why did they want their little you know, encampments and villages where they'd been farming four months earlier to be flooded to, and then wait patiently for it all to dry out. Why, why would farmers want floods to come along? Because the seed was remineralizing and re, you know, reinvigorating that catalytic field necessary for all life forms to thrive from. Our cells love the, the footprint of this mineral buzz, literally an electrical buzz. We come from the sea and there's something about the C90 um, feed it to, you know, chickens, to, to you know, to, to dogs and kitties, you know, and certainly to, it, uh, it's really popular with the sheep farmers and with the cattle farmers, okay? So if you're going to have livestock, you want to feed it the healthiest food sources imaginable. This is the ultimate salt lick, the C90. I'm going to give you four pounds. John, you have really bullied me here, and I'm proud of you for doing it, into providing your viewers with something. Yes, indeed, you have triple A group buying power representation thanks to mr jk here and so you're getting all of these products stuffed into a u.s postal service flat rate large large uh, board game box this is the boogie board box special we're gonna do it right now for the introductory price only limited time very limited very limited so if you see this order it now because this price will disappear he's almost losing money on yeah this. i mean pretty much i mean you know like i always tell you john like I always tell all my viewers, you know, money's like manure. You gotta spread it around. You can't let it pile up and stink. Well, I'm spreading it mighty thin for you this time, John, to give everybody the best bang for their big board game box that they possibly could to really revitalize. I mean, your how soil. many pounds of this stuff, man? It's this like... is this is some rich stuff. Oh, this is like a 30, 40 pound box, dude. I mean, this is a big ass box, okay? I don't need to go to the gym anymore because now I'm shipping these boxes out every day. These both are all serious. I mean, I want you guys to have as much of this good stuff as possible, and it's really hard because local places don't sell, you know, wood chip hummus like this, like the boogie hummus. I mean, I always encourage you guys to make it yourself if you don't want to buy it. It's not that hard. Get some wood chips, put it in a pile, let it rot for three years, maybe inoculate it so you can get it to happen a little bit faster with some, uh, you know, fungus and whatnot, and check my past videos for a video on that. You can make your own worm castings by feeding your own worms, you know, stuff, but Josh has brought this together for you guys so that you guys could do this easily by just ordering it, you'll have the good stuff to use in your garden. It is ridiculous that you should have to pay for shipping for good wood chip compost, and I am morally opposed to it, and I want America. You know, if I was Michelle Obama, I would have the White House have a communal compost facility and all the trees that they're chopping down for the power lines in Washington, D.C. should all be, you know, communally composted into this beautiful wood chip hummus. And I would build beautiful, great big worm bins and I'd teach every child in America, this is the future. It's no longer the three R's reading, writing, and arithmetic. It's now the three R's plus G. It's growing your greens. It's gardening. Suburbia is dying. 10 kilocalories of fossil fuel energy, folks, to deliver one calorie to your table. That's disgusting. Remember, what will our great-grandchildren be thinking of this generation? It's time to scrub the plate clean. Goodbye, Monsanto. Goodbye, carbon farming. Goodbye, suburbia. Hello, communal living. Hello, communal composting. Hello, building our topsoil back. Hello, happy brewing and merry mulching, people. Grow or die. Who wants to die? I want to grow and live. Thank you, John. Thank you so much for doing this. And tell them the price. All right, man. So the price on this stuff, $49.99 and like $15 and some change is going to shipping. So Josh is only going to be getting 35 bucks for all this stuff shipped to you. Actually, that's probably about a buck a pound Why don't you rub you it guys. in, man? Make it sting a little <laughs> harder. <laughs> I mean, that's an incredible deal. Once again, this is a limited time. I don't know how long he's going to... 
keep these prices until he sells out of his current stock, and then he's probably going to have to raise a price on you. So if you guys are it, yeah, not a subscriber and watching this later, and you missed the good price, I apologize. Be sure to subscribe to my video so when you see the next deal, you want to jump on it fast and immediately before the price goes up because he's going to have to raise the price to remain a viable business so they can continue to bring you these great products that could that you can use in your garden to get the excellent results. This stuff, you know, I'll keep it at $49.99 for this first month for a 30-day introductory period, but always on the GYG page, only at boogiebrew.net. BoogieBrew.net forward slash GYG. I'll tell you what, I'm making your viewers a promise as long as my suppliers don't increase my bottom end costs on the commodity items that I'm including in here. We'll keep it at $59.99. I'll keep it as affordable as possible. For the first month, $49.99. Before we go, actually, I want to talk about one last product you guys are offering right now. And if they're going to get this package, if they didn't already order this other item, I definitely encourage you guys to order it. I mean, you know, if you're going to be brewing your own compost tea, the thing you guys should be brewing it is chlorine-free water. I mean, you guys buy bottled water and drink, and I don't recommend you guys buy bottled water because all the plastic bottles that are ending up in the landfill and not getting recycled is horrendous. I always encourage you guys to filter your own water at home and take out the bad stuff, and you definitely need to do that with a compost tea. And especially if you're going to get on a program where you're enriching the soil microbiology in your soil, you don't want to be putting chlorinated city tap water that no, is probably going to be reducing your micro populations when you're working and spending money to build them up. So Josh, that's why I recommend uh, you know my viewers buy the Boogie Blue water filter. Why do you have to? Why do you have to mention this filter? We're we're suffering a massive filter inventory crisis. This Boogie Blue is a rare breed these days. We are selling so many of these filters. We've literally outstripped our production supply, you know, our manufacturer supply. We've become the number one reseller of these filters. These are the best bang for your buck filter. We are getting a bunch more. We're, I think we're going to have enough to last us until July. Um, but yeah, we are continuing to have these on the GYG page uh, for $44 delivered. BoogieBrew.net forward slash GYG. Lowest delivered price on a quality garden hose filter that's guaranteed to last you at least 35,000 gallons. The manufacturer actually quotes them at 45,000 because some of you are living in parts of the country with hard water, you might get less, so we quote them at 35K. Fabulous filter. All I can say is they work. I'm, I'm aware of them using a catalyzed, you know, quartz and copper catalyzed. It's not normal carbon. It's a, a supercharged catalyzed carbon, whatever that means. I know it works. It's basically the same technology that's in your super high-end, really good quality, you know, $30 to $50 price range shower filter. But there's more of the material because, of course, on a hose, you have the luxury that you wouldn't have on a shower of far greater length. Thus, the, the water gets to travel not just through more carbon, but through a longer, more circuitous uh, route, you know, on its way being scrubbed. And it does do an admirable job of scrubbing the enemies of good soil biology. And John's absolutely correct. It, is, it makes no sense whatsoever to invest in rebuilding that microbial matrix that's missing in America's topsoil if you're only going to wipe it out with chlorinated city water. I personally use the Boogie Brew products in my garden. I believe in them. They're natural, you know, organic products that I use, and I believe you guys should also use them. If you want to get the deal that we showed here today, you want to visit the website boogiebrew.net slash gyg. Once again, this is only for a limited time. Josh, do you have any final words you'd like to say to my viewers? Any last words of wisdom from a former grower, now gone compost uh, tea formulator? <laughs> Uh, just thank you all for believing in my products. You don't know how much it means to myself and my partner Leah. John, God bless you for endorsing these things. People do tell me all the time, you have the world's greatest compost tea. It's, it's on our label. You know, we're proud of that. We're going to keep trying to do that. Like I said, keep on brewing. Brew, baby, brew. All right, Josh, so thanks a lot for uh, being on the show today and explaining some of the problems and challenges with the conventional synthetic fertilizers versus the organic fertilizers being sold today. And in my opinion, even a better choice that I want you guys all to experience. And I'm thankful that Josh is around to be able to offer these products to you because if he wasn't here to do it, actually, I don't know anybody else that's making high-quality products with such a range of varieties and making them affordable 
uh, ship to anywhere in the 50 United States like Josh is. So I'm actually grateful that he's here that I can actually promote these good, solid products that I personally use in my garden with you guys. So uh, once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowInYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep on growing.